Hello folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a snake game in Godot. The code and assets are all on my GitHub which is linked in the description. I start off with a blank scene where I create a node and this is a basic Godot node without much functionality to it. I'll rename it to main. Next I will save this inside of the scenes folder. It already has a default file name which is the same as the name of the node and attach a script to it. We can define a couple of game variables right at the start. These are score and game started, which is set to false. The game board can be split into a grid of equal size squares. This allows us to position the food and to control the movement of the snake. This grid would require a couple of variables to be defined, which are added to the script. These are the cells variable, which says there are 20 cells in each row and each column, and the cell size variable to define the size of each cell as 50 pixels. Next, I can add a 2D sprite for my background. I rename the node so I can tell them apart later on, and I drag the background image from the assets folder onto the texture property, which assigns the image to this node. Then I can switch to the 2D view to adjust the positioning of this image. I need to leave some space at the top for the score panel, so I offset the Y coordinate by 50 pixels, which is the size of a single cell. At the same time, I update the window dimensions to fit my game. Now I'll create that score panel at the top. This will be a new scene, and it will be a canvas layer. Inside it, I'll have a panel for the score panel, which I will rename, and then a label for the score itself, which I will also rename. I rename the node, and then I save it inside of the scenes folder like before. I configure the score panel node to change its size and its color. You can customize it as you want. The main thing to keep in mind is that the height of it needs to be 50 pixels. Next, I update the score label text. If you want to change the font, then there is one inside the assets folder, which you can drag over onto the font property. I can add this to my main scene by instantiating it. Now the score panel is shown together with the background all on the main scene. Next, I'll create the snake. To do this, I create a new scene called Snake Segment, and this will consist of a panel type node. This is in place of using an image, since I can customize the appearance of the segment with the various panel properties. Here, within the Transform property, I need to make sure to set the size to 50 by 50 pixels, so that each segment is the same size as a grid on our game board. Other than that, I just need to set the color, and you can customize this however you wish. Next, I will save this inside of the Scenes folder. To get the segment into the main scene, I need to export the scene variable from the script. I can then drag it over to assign it to that variable. Now we define variables for the snake and its movement. The snake itself has three variables. Snake data is the grid coordinate of each segment, while old data stores the previous grid coordinates, which we will use for moving the snake. The snake variable stores the actual segment scenes that we create as the snake grows. The movement variables include the starting position of 99, which is a grid reference on our 20 by 20 game grid. Then the four different movement directions, a variable for the current direction, and a variable we can use to stop the snake from moving. Inside the ready function, I will call a new game function. Now, this can be used later to quickly restart the game. The new game function sets the score to zero and updates the text of the score label to reflect this. It also sets the move direction to up and can move to true. It will then call the generate snake function. This will first clear the data in the three arrays, then start with a starting position and using a for loop, create three segments vertically down. The add segments function needs to be defined next. This will store the grid position inside the snake data array, then create a segment scene and position it on the screen. We offset by one cell size to leave room at the top for the score panel, add the new segment as a child node, and add it to the array to keep track of it later. Now we can see that the snake is being generated. The snake movement will be controlled by a timer. Create a timer node. I rename the node and set the wait time to 0.1 seconds. Leave one shot and auto start off. Next, define the keys in the input map. I used WASD controls here and I assigned variables move up, move down, left and right to these keys. 
in the process function call the move snake function. And in the move snake function, first check if the snake is allowed to move, and then add an input check for move down. You only want to be able to press this if the snake isn't currently moving up, since you don't want the snake to move through itself. Update the move direction and set the can move variable to false. Add an if statement to check if the game has started, and if not, start the game. Create the start game function, which will start the timer. Now we can replicate the movement checks for the other three directions, making sure to update the move direction variables correctly. If we run the code now, you notice that even though I'm pressing the keys, it still doesn't move. That's because we need to connect the timer to our script and check it for a timeout. This creates a new function that will trigger every time that happens. In here, we can allow snake movement again. Snake movement will happen by first moving the head, then going through the remaining segments and moving them to the position of the one in front of it. And this is how we do it with code. We save the current snake data in the old data for reference, we move the head of the snake to the new position, and then we go through each remaining segment with a for loop and set its position to the one in front of it. If we run it now, you can see that the snake is moving correctly. Now we can add three checks after each movement. Out of bounds, we'll check the position of the snake's head, and if it's outside of our grid, then we trigger the end game function. Check self eaten will iterate through each body segment and check if the coordinates are the same as the head segment. If so, we end the game. We haven't created food yet, so we will come back to this last one. But first, we need to create the end game function, and this will pass for now. To create food, I first of all create a new sprite node, and then I rename it to food. I drag over the Apple image into the texture property, and then I offset the image by 25 pixels to position it centrally. I also need a couple of food variables to define position and whether or not we need to generate new food. Now I need to position the food. You can generate random variables to position it that way, but there's a chance that the food will be created on a cell that a snake is already on. So we use a while loop to continue generating food and then checking to make sure it doesn't overlap with the snake. When we pick a position that is free, we can assign that to the food node. We need to run this function when the game is first started. So I scroll up and I add it into the new game function right at the top. Before we can test this out, we need to pass this function to remove the error. Now, every time I run the game, you can see that the food is being positioned in a random location. Now I can fill out the check food eaten function from before. This just checks if the head coordinates are the same as the food coordinates. It increases the score, adds a segment and moves the food. We can now test this out and you can see that the food is moving and the score is increasing by one each time. Now we need a game over menu. Create a new scene and add a node. This is going to be a canvas layer type. Change the name to game over menu and then switch to the 2D view so that you can start to customize it. We need to add a panel node, then a label node, and then lastly, a button node. Once you have all three, make sure to rename them all. Now we need to customize these three nodes to make it look like a nice game over screen. You can customize this whichever way you want. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this to give you an idea of what I've done. Once you're happy with your game over display, make sure that you save it inside of the scenes folder. This scene will need a small script to allow us to detect when the button is clicked. I create a new signal called restart. Then I go into the restart buttons node tab and I connect the press signal to the scene. This gives me a new function from which I can emit the restart signal. Then add this scene to the main scene. And when you go into nodes, you can now see this new signal is being pulled through. We will come back to this shortly. Now if we run the game again, you can see the game over screen, but it's there from the very start. We need to hide this at the beginning of the game. Go to the new game function and first unpause it if it was paused and hide the game over menu. Now in the end game function, we can show the game over menu, stop the timer, set the game started variable to false and pause the game. This will pause everything, but we want the game over menu to still be active so update the process mode to when paused. 
Now we go into Nodes, click on the Restart Signal to connect it to the script. Inside that, put the New Game function. If we run it again and we get a game over, you see that that screen comes up. But when I restart the game, it leaves the previous snake in position. We need to clear those previous segments, and to do that, we have to group them together. Go into the snake segment and create a segments group. And this allows us to control all of the segments at the same time. Then, in the new game function, run the QFree method on the group to delete them all. And now you have a fully functioning snake game. If you found this tutorial useful, then please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.